today I have this really funny book called The Diary of a Worm, and the author is Doreen Cronin, and the pictures are by Harry Bliss. So it is all about this worm keeping a journal, just like you do. Do you think this book is fiction or nonfiction? It must be fiction, make-believe, right? Worms don't really keep journals. And do you know what's also interesting about this book? Same lady wrote Click Clack Moo, Tow Cows That Type. She's written more than one really good book. Diary of a Worm. And here's some of the pictures he put in his diary. It's pretty silly. March 20th. Mom says there are three things I should always remember. One, the earth gives us everything we need. There's me. Two, when we dig tunnels, we help take care of the earth. Must make tunnel, help earth breathe. Three, never bother daddy when he's eating the newspaper. Chomp. March 29th. Today, I tried to teach Spider how to dig. Spider sang, huh? Because spiders aren't so good at digging. First of all, his legs got stuck. I think I've twisted one of my ankles. Then he swallowed a bunch of dirt. I give up. Tomorrow he's going to teach me how to walk upside down. March 30th. Worms cannot walk upside down. That looks like a scary day. April 4th. Fishing season started today. We all dug deeper. This says bait. This says grandpa. And some one of the other worms is saying, did you guys hear something? Do you know why they dug deeper? What do people use for bait fishing? Worms, they didn't want to get dug up and fed to a fish. April 10th, it rained all night and the ground was soaked. We spent the entire day on the sidewalk. We learned hopscotch is a very dangerous game. April 15th, I forgot my lunch today. I got so hungry, I ate my homework. My teacher made me write, I will not eat my homework, 10 times. When I was finished, I ate that too. April 20th, I snuck up on some kids in the park today. They didn't hear me coming. I wiggled up right between them and they screamed. I love when they do that. May 1st, Grandpa taught us that good manners are very important. So today I said good morning to the first aunt I saw. Good morning. There were 600 more of them in line. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, nice to see you. Howdy, good morning. I stood there all day. <laughs> He's trying to be polite like his grandpa taught him to. May 8th had the worst nightmare last night. Giant birds were playing hopscotch. Mom says, I have to stop eating so much garbage right before I go to bed. Look at his cute little worm bed. It's made out of a tea box. May 15th, I got into a fight with Spider today. He told me you need legs to be cool. Then he ran. I couldn't keep up. Maybe he's right. 
Look, he's imagining Spider in a race, crossing the finish line without him. May 16th, I felt I made Spider laugh so hard he fell out of his tree. Who needs legs anyway? Thud. <clears throat> Last night, oh, it's May 28th. Last night I went to the school dance. You put your head in, you put your head out. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. Well, that's all we could do. <laughs> June 5th. Today we made macaroni necklaces in art class. I brought mine home and we ate it for dinner. You're very talented. June 15th. My older sister thinks she's so pretty. I told her that no matter how much time she spends looking in the mirror, her face will always look just like her rear end. <gasps> now that would normally not be a very nice thing to say, but the funny thing about worms is their head really does look just like their rear end. Spider thought that was really funny. Mom did not. Uh -oh. July 4th. When I grow up, I want to be a Secret Service agent. Spider says I will have to be very careful because the president might step on me by mistake. It's a dangerous job, I told him, but someone's got to do it. July 28th. Three things I don't like about being a worm. Number one, I can't chew gum. Number two, I can't have a dog. Can we keep him, Mom? And she's saying, ah! All that homework is number three. July 29th. Three good things about being a worm. Number one, I never have to go to the dentist. He's saying, no cavities. No teeth, either. Number two, I never get in trouble for tracking mud through the house. And number three, I never have to take a bath. And his mom's saying, oh, who's my grubby little boy? She likes him to be grubby. August 1st. It's not always easy being a worm. We're very small, and sometimes people forget that we're even here. But, like Mom always says, the earth never forgets we're here. It's true. Earths do live underground, and they do help the earth. And here's some more pictures. A bee stung him. He's all swollen. He found this really cool rock. He doesn't know it's a baseball. Isn't this leaf awesome? Mom and Dad's anniversary. Gross! Here's his own comic and her sister's slumber party. He must have scared him. Hee <laughs> hee. And his favorite pile of dirt. He's hugging it. I love that book. It's very silly. Um, and I also wanted to mention Luna did some scientific research and she told me that she found out on a Wild Kratz episode that worms cannot drown. And if you want to watch it, it's called the episode of the Squirmy Wormy. You could learn even more about worms, but I bet you won't learn that worms keep a journal. So boys and girls, this week we learned all about living things and non-living things. We did learn that worms are living because, hmm, how do we know worms are living? Can anyone remember a reason? They eat. They need water. They need air. Can they move by themselves? And do they reproduce? What does reproduce mean again? To have babies to make more of themselves. Right, so then I also sent you a little page where you could sort pictures, things that are living, things that are non-living. But one thing that's really fun to do, um, I've done this with kids as a science experiment at school, is for you to take a piece of paper 
and separate it just like that other piece of paper was where you sorted things. One side says living, one says non-living. And then to go outside and do some scientific research. So what I do with the kids at school is we go outside, we pick a spot and I blow the whistle and everybody gets low. And you look around and you listen for something that's living. And you draw a picture of it under the living side. Or, and then you could try to write the word too. And then you look or listen for something that's not living. Same thing, draw a picture, write the word. Then you stand up, walk to a different place and do the same thing for both sides. Then you stand up, walk to a new place and do the same thing in a new place again. So you could have a whole bunch of things right in your own yard or your street of living and non-living things. It's pretty fun. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you tomorrow.